In this video, we are compelled to respond to a debunk attempt regarding our earthquake forecasting, one that understands the forecasting process like a cockroach understands the minutia of existing precedent on recips aliquidar. They claim, we don't include our misses, but let's get some background. This is our current top quake scoreboard. According to the foundational research of the model, our factors should precede about 70% of the largest earthquakes, and we should be able to put them on alert and about the same amount of the total energy released by those earthquakes should be captured as well. Right now, we're at 71.8% of the joule energy using about what is actually now 9.1% of global fault zones on average. This is not about predicting specific events, but rather projecting the regions where electricity suggests the risk of large seismic events is great. Kind of like when 15 states are under tornado watch and only two large twisters drop, say, in the same state. Was that a bad forecast or a good one? Do you say they missed 14 states and hit one forecast, or is that the wrong way of looking at it? Should you say they highlighted a high-risk area for tornadoes and were correct within that area? If they put the whole country on alert, it might not be helpful or relevant, but if they constrain the timing and location, do we say they have learned a thing or two about predicting tornadoes? I think that's a fairly easy statement to validate. So here, Think of that. We see multiple regions at high risk across the globe on most days, and it amounts to about 9 or 10 percent of Earth's active fault lines if you would put them all together. Now granted, we can't boast tornado forecast success stats or precision, but we claim to only have taken the first step towards eventual, actionable earthquake forecasting. We're just at an informational stage now. We've got alerts for future times and areas to watch for potential foreshocks in black and yellow, but we usually have our actual, current, high alerts in red, often spread out like this over those aforementioned fault zones. Not each is a prediction, but that is what a recent debunking thinks. While all the big quakes that have occurred are on this list, hit or miss, the claim by the debunker is that we don't include misses despite the fact that these are indeed all the 6.9s and higher since forecasting began in October of 2016, and the fact that each has a hit or miss label verifiable by the alerts forever posted on our Twitter page. Link is below, by the way. So, for example, one day, we had our alert zone focused here, and a 6.7 struck the region that day. The debunker has this in his head as one hit and one miss, because nothing hit the northern line. But I imagine... What if I cut both of those lines in half, making four lines in total, and let's say I deleted 10% of the total line that is there? The forecast would actually be more significant due to having success with less of the fault zones on alert. But all of a sudden, in the debunker's mind, you are now one hit and three misses, because only one of the lines would have taken the earthquake. Not only is this attempt at debunking completely ignoring the facts about our broad risk zone forecasting, and mistakenly thinking that each and every little red zone is an independent prediction of an earthquake to come. But, by that same logic, it would actually hurt your score to cut out some of those red lines and have less area on alert. I hope I don't have to say much more. Not every red area is a prediction, it is an indication of risk. We submit that many, many big quakes are going to hit those risk areas, and right now it appears that the electrical factors can constrain Earth's highest risk areas to a small percentage and yet capture the majority of the largest event's energy. Just for a reminder, here are a few minutes of our presentation earlier this year, followed by some facts and a paper describing NASA's new earthquake forecasting using electricity. We first have to begin with what I call the solar system circuit. What it is and what it isn't. And we're going to go over two little rules that we use just to sort of get us all on the same page to get started. Now, what this is and what this isn't. This is not actionable information. We do not yet have the ability to forecast seismicity in a way that governments can uh, commit resources, the way that people need to be notified in such that it could create panic, something like that. It's nowhere near hurricane forecasting. But what it is, is a method for narrowing down the seemingly global risk for earthquakes at any given time to about 10, 15, to 20 percent 
of the Earth's faults, updated every few hours to every day. And those capture 70 to 80 percent of the magnitude 6 and higher earthquakes. So this is informational rather than actionable. But could you imagine if we tried to go from knowing nothing about when a hurricane was going to come to what we have today? There are intermediate steps. It's a progression over time. And I think this is going to be an intermediate step. And that's what we're going to be presenting here today and tomorrow. The most recent rule. It's the second line you have there. What the most recent rule is, is it states that the very last alert map or the very last alert that was posted before such a big earthquake must count. It doesn't matter what was on alert in the post before. If an area had been alert on uh, alert for 10, 20, 30 straight maps, the moment it comes off of a map, it goes off of alert. And so it's, this creates a very, very simple and ultimately restrictive view of success. When a big earthquake comes, what was the very most recent earthquake map, risk map that was posted? And is the earthquake in question included in the alert zones or is it not? We also have the highest alert rule. Those who know about our earthquake alert maps know we have red lines. There are alert stars. There are yellow lines. We've come to notify things with blue and green as well. Well, for the model, we only count the successes, the hits of the highest possible alert that given day. It is normally an alert star or a red line, for those of you who are well aware with some of our earthquake maps. Um, that's pretty much how it goes. We will oftentimes put a lot of different colors on there, but in terms of success versus failure in the model, it is indeed all about what is on highest alert at that time. 